am Sophie Ndaba and you are watching Joburg Today. Hello and welcome to Joburg Today. My name is Dumi Tlapo bringing you the best of what's going down in and around Johannesburg. Today, Mayor Herman Mashaba will be delivering his first State of the City address at the new council chambers in Bramfontein. And naturally, we are here to keep you updated on the latest. But first things first, before we get into the action address, let's have a look at the opening ceremony. The people have chosen a diverse group of parties to lead them. Our people have elected this government intentionally so that no single political party can abuse the power in our city ever again. They've done so because their lived experience of suffering requires something different from what happened before. The fact that our government is required to engage and collaborate with different parties to find solutions to our residents' many challenges is making our government even stronger. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our coalition partners and the EFF for the role that they've played and they continue to play in saving this city and country. Because, because a Johannesburg that works is a South Africa that works. <laughs> History is going to be made today in this chamber. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today to deliver to the residents of our city, perhaps for the first time, the true state of our city. Because we must take our residents into our confidence and be honest about the current state of our city. Because, like so many things in life, change has to start with the honest assessment of the state of affairs. This is required so that we can roll up our collective sleeves and get to the work of creating a better Johannesburg, knowing the true magnitude of the task ahead. Government has to be in tune with the people that they serve. Too many of our residents remain without the dignity of work. Johannesburg today has 862,000 unemployed people with an unemployment rate at over 30%. The youth of the city are the greatest casualties of this crisis, facing an unemployment rate of over 50%. By accepting and continuing with the project of 1.6% economic growth rate for our city, we will not be able to reverse the high rate of unemployment facing our youth. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Neglect to prioritize maintenance and repairs of the city infrastructure has produced a 10-year, 170 billion rands unfunded gap on capital infrastructure. It sits under our roads and pavements, out of sight and out of mind, and not a priority historically. The lights are starting to go out as some of our 60-year-old overloaded electricity substations, part of a 69 billion rands backlog. Water losses have reached 31%, and there are currently 371 leaks per kilometer of water pipes in our city. Our roads have reported repairs and maintenance backlog exceeding a staggering 5 billion rands. We have inherited the housing backlog conservatively estimated at 300,000 units, an average delivery of only 3,500 housing units per year. Putting aside the impact of migration into our city, it would take a century to resolve the current housing backlog alone. It is clear, it is very clear that the existing state of affairs is simply unsustainable. Soon after taking office, I met with senior administration and political leadership of the city, and we developed a 10-point plan to guide us on this important journey. Much progress has been made, and today, 
I'm pleased to report to you where we stand on these matters. The first part of the plan is to ensure that the entire city embraces the environment of a new coalition government. This is necessary to help us move forward with speed and ensure that every employee of the city has respect for the electorate's wishes. From our own interaction with employees and officials, it has become clear to me that vast majority understand and embrace our residents' demand for change. The second part of the plan is to run a responsive and pro-poor government with a focus on redress. I have stated on numerous occasions that this administration is unapologetically pro-poor. Too many of our residents remain without the dignity of work and incapable of supporting themselves and their families. Spatial and, in, spatial and income inequality continue to define the city's landscape with poor communities suffering from inadequate service delivery in comparison to their more affluent counterparts. We cannot build the city we also deeply desire when so many of our people can only look from a distance as prosperity, reaching out and being unable to access it. Addressing this is a non-negotiable that our entire city depends on. It is a project that every resident, the haves and the have-nots, must join hands with government to work together to achieve. At the time of announcing our 10-point plan, I committed that when we determine our budget for the 2017-2018 financial year, it will focus on the most deprived in our city. Today, I'm pleased to announce that our 2017-18 proposed budget, we aim to ensure that a minimum of 60% of the city's capital expenditure is directed towards projects in traditionally poor and underserviced communities. For a more detailed report and analysis on the proposed 10-point plan, do join us tomorrow. Hi, I'm Danny Glover, and you're watching Joburg Today. Like us on Facebook, JoburgToday.tv, and follow us on Twitter at Joburg Today. Mpoma Mashiko got the opportunity to have a quick chat with the MMC of Development Planning, Funze Langobeni, to find out a bit more about what he is looking forward to regarding his department, as well as how they managed to work around the adjustment budget issued by the mayor earlier this year. The adjustment budget was quite favorable to us as a department. Um, when we arrived in the department, uh, we realized that uh, we are 54% 50, capacitated in terms of human resource. Um, and we realized that uh, law enforcement uh, on the ground when it comes to building control, when it comes to land use, it's, uh, it's, it's really an important issue. And it was important for us to ensure that we get money out of the adjustment budget to be able to hire more people in the department who can be able to do the job for us. We need more building inspectors on the ground. We need more uh, land use uh, officers on the ground. And that we are getting. Uh, we are busy with interviews. Um, some of them are already in the department. They are going through training. And we're looking forward to them uh, really making a difference and uh, delivering on uh, the promise that we've made to our residents of Johannesburg. Hi guys, my name is Boiti and you're watching Joburg Today. Raymond caught up with a few members of the Johannesburg Student Council. Let's have a look at what the next generation of leaders has to say. From today, I would like to find out what happens in the Council of Johannesburg to see what happens if you actually go from Student Council to Council of Johannesburg and how you would address the nation and the people of Johannesburg. Personally, I really want to understand what the new mayor has in plan for, for the entire city and I want to see what um, critical thinking that has been done behind the project that he wants to implement and I want to see what are his plans basically. Uh, this city is booming, hey? Eh? We, we're going to be a city that realizes its dreams. Not only are we just going to be dreaming and not doing anything about it, but we're going to be having a lot of academics coming up. We're going to have a lot of students, uh, a lot more movements that, that, that criticize governance. And I think that's a good thing because perfect governance does not exist. I just really want to see how 
the council, especially since they are the leaders of our city, how they tackle problems in our city and how they impart their knowledge to the young and how they actually exercise what they preach. What's up everyone, it's your boy DJ Sab, the best thing ever from YFM 99.2 and you are watching Joburg Today. That's all from me. Be sure to keep your eyes open and glued to the site because we will be bringing you some highlights and reactions as well as expert opinions from people who will be analyzing the city's address. I'm Dimin Tlapo for Joburg Today.